Welcome to this podcast designed to prepare students to master the 2013 Washington State Biology End of Course Assessment. I hope that whether you're a student, a parent, or an educator, you will get a lot out of tuning in. The main goals for this podcast are to become familiar with the types of questions that will be featured on the EOC, secondly, to closely examine a practice scenario and evaluate where and how points can be earned, lastly, to become aware of some common ways to earn points and pitfalls to avoid that might cost students points when answering this type of short answer prompt. As a quick note, all students beginning with the class of 2015 and beyond are required to pass the Biology EOC as part of graduation requirements for the state of Washington. When we look at the types of questions on the EOC, you will find that there are three different categories of item types. First are the multiple choice, secondly completion, and thirdly short answer and it'll be the short answer types that we'll be looking at in this podcast series. Of the seven short answer types, we'll be looking at criteria and constraints today. So a couple words to be familiar with. Uh, Criteria is defined as a factor or a thing by which something is judged, and a constraint is a limitation or limitations that are imposed on possible solutions. For example, Um, Many times limitations uh, to a project would be not enough time or not enough money, not enough education or expertise. Maybe the available technology is not available and uh, certain laws may prevent a certain solution to be uh, put into place. So lots of different kinds of constraints. When we look at the scoring of this kind of short answer item type, we'll notice that there are Uh, two attributes and they're both the same so in this case we're looking at a quantity of responses so you'll need to have two separate responses each uh, containing a constraint or a limitation and then an explanation for why that constraint is a limitation to a solution if you include both of those uh, attributes then you'll score two points and you'll see that there's a maximum of two points on this item type so in uh, one scenario that was recently given by OSPI. There was a uh, salmonberry plant scenario where there's a forest in which um, salmonberry plants were being measured for their density and whether or not um, environmental factors were influencing how densely they were growing. And and then related to that scenario would be uh, one that involved problem bears that had um, gathered in a certain uh, forested area that humans frequented. And the question is, how do we get rid of the bears in an uh, environmentally responsible way? Here's the prompt. Some bears are getting into trash cans at campgrounds near the forest. The park rangers plan to trap and relocate these bears to solve the problem of these bears getting into the trash. Students are prompted to describe two constraints or limits, other than cost, that park rangers could encounter while trapping and relocating these bears. So in this particular prompt, uh, like many of the other ones, your ability to memorize and recall things is not what's being tested here. You're you're being tested about critical thinking skills and reasoning through various possible solutions and the pros and cons to that solution. So in this case, the prompt is given. So I would just say pay special attention to what they're asking you to do and then respond as uh, thoroughly and as lengthily as you can. So two constraints on trapping and relocating the bears and then describe how each constraint is a limitation. So if we look at the attributes, the first thing you're asked to do is to identify two constraints. So did you describe two constraints or limitations other than cost that the park rangers could face while trapping and relocating these bears? So on this screenshot, you'll see that uh, four different constraints are listed and any of those would be potentially uh, limiting to uh, getting rid of the problem. And then paired with that, is did you describe how the limitations to the constraints would make it difficult for you to solve this problem. So in part B of this attribute list, you'll see that for each of those four constraints, this is an explanation for why it's a constraint. So let's take a look and see how this scores on a two, one, and zero basis. So here's a student response that scored two points. And you'll notice that in the student response, Uh, both uh, constraints and limitations to the constraint were given. And then you'll see in this uh, rubric here, you'll find that uh, the first constraint, the bears might find their way back to the campground, was also paired with why that 
would be a limitation so that they would have to be trapped again to remove them. And then a second restraint was given. The traps will have to be very large to contain the bears. The limitation is moving those traps may require special equipment. So there's lots of different ways that you could answer this, but really comparing the constraint with the limitation in a logical, reasonable way will be the best bet to get those points. Here's a one point response. You'll notice that there's not as much written. And again, length is not so much an issue here as did you connect your answers to the prompt. So let's see how this was scored. In the first respect, only the constraint was given, but the limitation was not. So there was no explanation of, of why that constraint would make it difficult to solve the problem. The second um, part of this uh, prompt, um, the traps will get the attention of people that was correctly paired with a reasonable limitation. And in this case, people could interfere with the traps or be caught in them themselves. And so in that case, they earned the second point, but not the first point. And again, both of these points are basically identical. It's just thinking of a different reason that the uh, constraint might be limited. And then a zero point response um, did not include um, either of the limitations, as we'll see. So in this case, you'll see that they've given constraints, which is good, but in order to get the point, you have to have a constraint plus a limitation. And so neither of those attributes were, were given points. So some takeaways. Uh, some students struggle with constraints in this uh, technical design process. So if a prompt asks about constraints on a solution not involving cost, which is money, a student can still earn the points even if your solution does involve money in some way. So for example, if, if there's a, a large degree of training required for the people involved in relocating these bears, um, money is certainly going to be a part of that, but also time and talent and education, those are all things that also could be involved. So um, money is commonly a, a limitation or a constraint, but it may not be the only one. And then another takeaway would be that if you want to define the reverse, meaning that why a solution would not work, so it kind of phrase it, phrase it in a negative way, that would also be acceptable. So uh, in this example, it reads, this solution won't work because, and then there's a description of um, the constraint that causes the solution not to work. So you can look at it from an, a positive or from a negative uh, viewpoint. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, you saw several things in this podcast. First of all, the short answer criterion constraint item has two attributes, so you have to score both of them to earn maximum points. You saw three sample student responses, each of which earned different scores from a high of two to a low of zero based on how well they match the rubric. And then finally, you learned how to avoid some simple mistakes that might cost you points when responding to this item type. Please direct any comments or questions to me at the email address provided on the screen. Good luck and I sure hope this helped.